You're watching Pittsburgh Steelers Talk. I am Tom Downey, and as I'm hopeful you guys know by now, we are doing the month-long like race at Chat Sports. The Steelers group with the four other teams you see here. Happy to report that we are gaining quite a bit of ground. We are still behind the Eagles, the you know, soulless fan base of Philadelphia who throw batteries at Santa, but we've surpassed the Chiefs now. I want to keep coming and get the Eagles next. So help us out. Like today's video right now. You're watching Pittsburgh Steelers Talk presented by Aura, the all-in-one digital safety tool that helps keep your financial and protect and your information safe online from hackers since more and more, we spend all of our time online. A free 14-day trial is available at Aura.com slash chatsports. Cancel at any time, so there's no reason not to give it a shot. On Steelers Talk today, we are taking a look at some potential cut candidates. The five players who were mentioned in a recent fan cited article that were fairly noteworthy. We begin with the first name on that list, Marcus Allen, who was initially drafted as a safety, kind of has more of a safety build, but has begun to transition and has transitioned into more of a hybrid linebacker role, that safety linebacker blend that has been so popular in the modern day NFL. Not someone who's just a box safety or a deep safety, but plays around the line of scrimmage. The issue for Allen is that the majority of his role has been special teams. And for a player who's been around the NFL for a long time, to barely contribute on defense, even in that hybrid role, you're looking for a little bit more out of the position at this point. So yes, he's played that hybrid safety linebacker role. I think Miles Killebrew can play that role as well. And the team has invested at both safety and linebacker. And we go through cut candidates. The numbers game always matters, right? Minka Fitzpatrick, Terrell Edmonds, those guys aren't going anywhere. They signed Monte Casey, and I'm not out on other youngsters. Donovan Steiner, Trey Norwood, Miles Killebrew to an extent. So I don't see a path for him at, say, which he didn't play much last year. So inside linebacker, I would argue maybe even a trickier spot for Allen to actually carve out a role on defense. Miles Jack, Devin Bush, Buddy Johnson, Robert Splain, uh, Buddy, I mentioned Buddy Johnson, Ulysses Gilbert, Mark Robinson. And one of those names that we'll get to later on in today's video. There is a numbers crunch at inside linebacker, so I think fan sided was correct to put on this list. These were players they think the Steelers should cut, by the way. Overall, Pittsburgh, I thought, had a pretty good offseason. Found, in theory, a new franchise quarterback. They've invested heavily on the defensive side of the football. Shout out Larry Ogunjobi. Grade the Steelers offseason for me so far, especially in light of the Ogunjobi pickup. A, B, C, D, or F. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here, take advantage of it. Head down there and grade the Steelers offseason so far. This one might be the uh, surprising name. Derek Watt, the fullback, who, again, has pretty heavily been a special teams player for Pittsburgh more than anything else. Yes, he's been the fullback, but from a snap count perspective, this is someone who played 86 snaps on offense last year. He played 52 snaps on offense. We're talking 7%. And 6%. This def this offense does not utilize a fullback that much. But he has been a core special teamer. The problem for Derek Watt, even though he is TJ Watt's brother, and I am sure TJ Watt will have to, to keep the, the, the family legacy continuing for Pittsburgh, is he is not the only family legacy member who could fill a similar role. Connor Hayward. The fullback slash tight end kind of chess piece at Michigan State is also on the roster, and I could easily see Pittsburgh saying, we don't need to carry a fullback. We can go with three tight ends, Fryermuth, Gentry, and Hayward, and just roll with those guys. What will make the team if the special team's impact is too much, if it's too important? If it's not, there's some decent savings to be had there with a potential release. Now, what you don't want to have happen to yourself is have your financial information compromised, your identity theft, or identity compromised via theft. More and more, every single person, me, producer Trace, producer Jeremy, intern Jack, we are all online more than ever. 
So you need to keep your information safe, and Aura helps you do that. They are giving you a free 14-day trial of their fantastic all-in-one online safety tool when you head over to Aura.com slash chat sports. That link, by the way, will be in the comment section and in the description of today's video. So check it out. With a cancel at any time trial, there's no reason not to try it out. Aura.com slash chat sports. Cut candidate number three, a player we have spent a lot of time on in Mason Rudolph. And it makes sense, right? The Steelers have established to an extent what their plan is at quarterback. Maybe Mitchell Trubisky is the guy to start off this season as QB1. But long term, it's going to be Kenny Pickett. There's no doubt about that. So what's the point of having a QB3 who you could cut and save $3 million, more than even Derek Watt, who you would save 2.75 by cutting. That's a decent chunk of change for a quarterback who's been, if I may be so rude, a bit mid in his NFL career. Uh, Mason Rudolph has, has not been the guy. I know and understand there were fair hopes around him, but this is the biggest potential savings of all the guys we've talked about so far, right? Marcus Allen saves 2.54. Hello, goodbye. You cut 2.75 by cutting Derek Watt. A flat $3 million by cutting Mason Rudolph. It makes a, a decent amount of sense at minimum to move on from him if you're Pittsburgh. And we've gone through this quite a bit. But you know that because you're subscribed. Now, a different question we've asked is this. And I want you to be honest because it's okay if you were or were not. Did you ever truly believe in Mason Rudolph being the franchise guy. We're not a backup. That's a reasonable expectation. But did you think he could be the guy to replace Big Ben? Why for yes or N for no? I want your honest answers. Safe space to reply right now in the comments section. Another offensive name here. That is Benny Snell, the running back who is in contention to be you know, RB2 this year. The Steelers would save just under a million dollars by cutting him, but he's also super cheap, so, you know, that's not a huge surprise there. It's almost a net gain, uh, or a net a net zero gain because you have to have so many roster to similar cost, so, you know. Benny Snell, to be blunt, was bad last year. 36 carries, 98 yards. But we've seen better play out of him in the past, although, you know, it's not like you can do much worse than 2.7 yards per carry, but he's never been above four in a season. 3.9 was his career high. His career numbers, 3.5 yards per carry. And that's at a 255 carry sample size. I have seen enough to go that, to know that Benny Snell is not a key piece for this team, nor should he be. He does help on special teams. That is important in any of these roster bubble conversations. But especially if Pittsburgh adds a different running back, I could see them going, you know what, Benny? Appreciate your time and service, but you know we're looking for somebody else to be a bit more dynamic maybe just a, than just a tone setter type at the running back position. Now, if you want the best Steelers videos right here on YouTube all year long, hit that big red button and subscribe. YouTube.com slash Steelers TV. If you're watching on YouTube, it's easy. Hit that big red button. If you're watching somewhere else, a clip or a, something along those lines, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, it's the link at the bottom of your screen. YouTube.com slash Steelers TV. And one last name, we start with a linebacker and we end on a linebacker. Robert Spillane, who is in a very unique position of being simultaneously hyped as a surprise starter at one point by a fan side, but also a player they should cut. I don't see Spillane starting, and I think a lot of this comes down to the hope that Devin Bush has a bounce-back season. There again, special teams impact here, and Spillane did start four games last year, seven in 2020, I have been fairly whelmed by his play. There is a $2.43 million savings with his release. And I come back to the depth right now at the linebacking core where you've got Devin Bush. You've got Miles Jack, fourth round pick Buddy Johnson, seventh round pick Mark Robinson, Ulysses Gilbert. I don't think you necessarily need Spillane. I think he could be a linebacker three or four, but if the young guys emerge and impress, that's when the contract implications really begin to kick in. So that was the five-man list from fans. I did, we've done ours in the past. We'll revisit closer to camp or after camp. But I want to hear from you. 
Name a Pittsburgh Steeler who you think ends up getting cut.